And thanks for joining us. I'm Emily Blaze and Rapline is on the road today. We are at the fire station number one on Panama City Beach and my guest is Captain Terry Paris with Panama City Beach Fire Rescue. Captain Paris, thanks for inviting us out to the station. Well, thanks for having me. Well, a lot of people are very interested in the life of a firefighter. Tell us kind of what that life is like and how long you've been doing that. Uh, well, a lot of people don't realize that we're here for 24 hours at a time. Um, so my shift started this morning at 7 a.m. and I'll work until 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. And then I'm off for 48 hours. So I have a rotating shift, one day on, two days off. Um, I consider that the best shift. <laughs> um, you know, so I, I know for a year, the whole year, every day that I work. So it lets me plan my family life, my vacations, um, lets me plan around my daughter's school so I can uh, help her out and volunteer, field trips, stuff like that. Um, since we're here at the fire station for 24 straight hours, um, you know, we have a, a day room, a kitchen, bedrooms, shower, laundry, stuff like that. It's literally a house um, with a big garage that we park the fire trucks at. So we go to the grocery store, um, we buy our food for uh, lunch, dinner, um, you know, we take showers, we do our laundry, um, hopefully at night we get to sleep. A lot of times that doesn't happen. We get woke up all night long running calls. So um, the day in the life of a fireman, you know, we come on shift at 7 in the morning. That's the start time for most departments. Um, usually we'll check out the essentials, the medical equipment, the truck, the pump, the water. And then we go to the gym, we work out for about an hour, we come back. Um, finish checking out anything that we didn't do before we went to the gym. Do morning training. Um, that usually takes us up to about lunchtime. We break, um, do lunch. Then in the afternoon, we finish other training, any projects for the day. We help the fire inspector out, help the fire chief, deputy chief, any projects they have going on. Um, and then in the evening, 4.30, 5 o'clock is considered downtime, close of business day. And then uh, our guys usually use that time to study. We take a lot of college classes. Uh, we, we never stop studying. Um, guys that are going for promotion or college degree or, or our EMT paramedic license, we're, we're always taking a college class. It never stops. Our education never stops. So they'll use that time to study. Um, and that's if we don't run calls. Um, we, we're always interrupted. Uh, there's a lot of times you don't get to eat lunch until six, seven o'clock at night, you know, so we're always interrupted on, on call. So it's a very busy day, very busy shift. And Captain Paris, um, you just mentioned there, excuse me, studying for different things like uh, EMT. And I noticed on your shirt, it says um, EMT. So are all firefighters EMTs as well? Or how does that work? Um, well, it depends on the agency that you work for. Um, nationwide, that's the trend. The mm -hmm. trend is to, to start incorporating medical calls with the fire service. Um, and, and we expand on the, the treatment. Um, some departments, it's not required. Um, but industry-wide, nationwide, there's that tend to go that way. Um, our fire department is the first and currently the only department in Bay County to run a true ALS service. And what, what I mean by that is we have paramedics on duty and we run advanced life support. We do everything that Bay County EMS does with the exception that we don't transport. So we have the life pack, we have all the narcotics. Um, we have paramedics on board. They do everything that the ambulance does. We don't transport. Um, we started the pilot program for the county. It's, it's worked great. We have numerous confirmed saves. And other departments um, have, have looked at us. Bay County Fire Rescue, within the last couple years, has started putting a lot of their firefighters through paramedic school. And they're trying to expand their program as well to, to come on board and run an ALS program and, and it's you know just expanding our service the quicker you can get a paramedic and advanced life support to the patient the greater their chances of survival is and that's that's what it's all about it's it doesn't when somebody calls 911 and they have a, a dire emergency it doesn't matter you know what city is that in my area your area it's who can get to them first and deliver the appropriate care 
So I know our department, Chief, Chief Daly, he doesn't care. If a county unit is closer to something in our city, by all means they go and, and vice versa. If we're closer to something in the county and our guys are available, he, he considers us one big area, no borders. It's what's best for the customer. And, and that's the way it should be. So if we can deliver that medical care to that customer in their time of need, absolutely. That's, that's what it's all about. Can you give us an example of a, a time maybe recently that you've had to use advanced life support or treat someone with your EMT credentials? Um, well, I have to, we have to be very vague because of HIPAA laws. Sure. Um, so without getting too much in depth, I, I can say that there was a call at a particular retail store to where it was a medical in nature and between the police department and the fire department getting there first and starting our advanced life support, the paramedic program, early CPR, the police department with their AED and our, our paramedics on the fire engine getting there with our defibrillator, the cardiac drugs, CPR. Um, and then the ambulance with Bay County EMS getting there and transporting the patient in, um, like I said, with CPR in progress, it was confirmed that that person is still with us today. So it's a confirmed save. That must be an incredible feeling when you're able to intervene and save someone's life. Oh, absolutely. You know, that's, to, to be a firefighter, you, you have to have that type of personality. You, you, we don't do it become rich. <laughs> we're, we're a public servant. Um, you, you do it because you're compassionate, you have a caring personality, you know, love, love a man, and you're a giving person. So you, you want to help. You know, you're, you're that person that sees a problem and, and wants to get in there and help. So if, if you can get in there and make a difference on somebody's worst day and there's a positive outcome, that's what it's all about. It, it's not about, you know, getting rich or the attaboys because there's so much that goes on behind the scene that the public doesn't know about and and most firemen firefighters because there's men and women uh, so most firefighters they don't care about re recognition you know they don't care about the public recognition and all that they do it because they want to do it um, if they get recognized and somebody says great job or they get an award that's nice too, but that's not why they do it. There's, there's so much that goes on every single day that the public doesn't realize, and, and they're the true heroes. And so, as you mentioned, you know, a good firefighter, um, you know, usually has that want to help mankind. So when are your earliest rec recollections of wanting to help people, when do you, you know, when do you remember your earliest memories of doing something to help someone else, or when were you inspired to maybe go down this field? Uh, well, me, it, it all stemmed, I can remember as, as a child when I had family members that got sick and injured, and not realizing, because at being a young age, you know, I couldn't help. And seeing the fire department and EMS come in and helping them out. And even growing up as a young adult, same thing, seeing some friends get hurt. And just like, I didn't like that helpless feeling. So that kind of spawned, you know, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna learn a little bit more. And, and even when I got into the fire service, you know, we, we started running some medical calls, but we, we didn't really bridge the gap into being first responder. And just seeing EMS on scene, and, and I just wanted to learn more and, and be able to know what the paramedic was talking about and have things ready for him. So that kind of spawned me into going to EMT school. And uh, so just that thirst of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And it's just all from seeing people that needed help and just wanting to help. And it, it all stemmed back from a young childhood. Yeah, that's really neat. We are on the road today, wrap line of course on the road. We're here with Captain Terry Paris with Panama City Beach Fire Rescue out at the uh, fire station number one, just off of Back Beach Road near 79. And as you mentioned, uh, your team 
works 24 hours and then off 48 hours. Now, do you have a, a team that you stay with throughout the year? Is it always the same crew? Uh, it, it is. Um, every, every, every agency, so it depends. My department, we, we kind of, every, every so many years, we kind of do a shift change. Um, so, but we, ha we haven't done it in a while, so we've, we've gotten pretty good. Everybody's <laughs> like, like a little family. So my guys that I've been with, um, you know, we stay together as a group. Um, we have my, my crew at station one and then my crew at station two. So we may go six months together at this station and then we may send a couple people down to that station and mix it up. Um, but all total on my shift, there's 10 guys. Uh, so, but we'll stay that way until the chief says, hey, you know, after so many years, let's do a shift change and we'll mix it up of all three shifts. Um, in a way it's good because then you get to learn everybody in the department mm -hmm. and there's strengths with everybody. So you'll get to tap into all the different resources. Um, working together as a crew, a lot of people don't realize and you'll get the questions, they'll see us at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. They'll see us out painting a fire hydrant or doing a project, you know, it was like, well, why does it take three of you to go to the grocery store? Why does it take three of you to paint a hydrant? And then we just explain to them, we stay together as a crew because we're on duty and at any time somebody could call 911 and we have to respond within seconds. So if one of my guys is at the grocery store or one of my guys was out painting a fire hydrant, then we would have to wait for them to respond back or we would respond without them. And then if we got on scene, we would have to wait for them to get there. And the delay in us getting together as a crew could mean life and death for, for the person on scene. We stay together as a crew, that way when 911 is called, we can respond immediately as a crew. It's, it's all about safety. So when we get on scene, my crew's intact and we, there's no, no hesitation, no delay. We can immediately handle what we see on scene. And again, you are listening and watching Rapline on GCTV and GC 90.7. My guest today is Captain Terry Paris with Panama City Beach Fire Rescue. I know something very um, close to your heart is um, preventing burnout and um, we talked last time about um, facilitating a, a group called LAST, L-A-S-T. Tell us what that is all about. Um, LAST is Local Assistance State Team and what that is, it's, it's a regional task force that deals with line of duty deaths. So when there's a firefighter that died in the line of duty, um, this task force would go in and be the behind the scenes crew that runs the fire or the excuse me the funeral so the the family that lost that firefighter they're grieving well the fire department needs time to grieve as well they don't need to worry about all the the details of trying to plan and run a firefighter funeral um, you'll get hundreds if not thousands of people coming in to the funeral. Um, just recently, um, the deputy, the Okaloosa deputy that passed away, um, there was thousands of law enforcement and firefighters and, and paramedics that showed up to his funeral. So logistically, it, it's huge. Well, that agency needs to be pulled out of the mix and give them time to grieve. So this task force would come in and more, more sense get in touch with the family find out what their wishes are, and then get in touch with the funeral home and, and run the funeral for them and let the agency grieve along with the family. Um, they would also make sure that all the federal benefits are in order, the paperwork is in order, that the family is, is gonna get everything that's entitled, to, excuse me, is entitled to them. Um, again, not that the department wouldn't miss doing that, but they need the time to grieve. And, and this task force would be specially trained and they would just come in and just kind of help oversee and make sure that 
you know, the family gets everything that they're entitled to. And now is this a project in the works or is it already up and running? It, well, both. Um, the, the task force is already established in the state of Florida through the Florida Fire Chiefs Association. But there's not really a team in the panhandle. So what I'm trying to do in our department is we're trying to get a team trained and up in the panhandle. So um, one, of the, one of the charities I picked was this, and uh, I raised some funds through our stair climb. So we're gonna purchase a trailer, we're gonna purchase everything that you need to do a firefighter funeral, and we'll have that trailer here at our station, which is centrally located between Tallahassee and, and Pensacola. And it'll be at disposable, disposal 24 seven. So if there's a need for it, the, need, the request will go through the Florida Fire Chiefs Association. And then within hours, this trailer will be on the way to whoever needs it. Um, we'll tie in with the Chiefs Association and get people trained um, to be on the task force. And it, it won't be just us. It'll be any department from Pensacola to Tallahassee. It'll be team members making up the whole panhandle. We're just going to provide the trailer and all the resources for the funeral. But it'll be the entire panhandle be on the, the team. So it's part of the team is in place. The other part, we're working on the resources behind it and get people trained. Now, is there anything that you need from the public to make this happen? Um, well, I mean, more donations to purchase supplies. So, I mean, if, if they would like to help out, they can definitely call me and then we could work at it. Absolutely. Okay, so always a need for the public to pitch in and to help. Sure. Okay, so um, now you mentioned that there could be a high rate of turnover for these high stress jobs that firefighters are in. Talk to me a little bit about that. Well, not any first responder. Um, there's, you know, I think we have the best jobs in the world um, being, a, being a firefighter. But also, you know, law enforcement and EMS. There's, there's a high turnover rate, high burnout rate, because it's very stressful. Um, we see stuff that nobody should have to see or could imagine. Um, you know, just, just, just gruesome things, you know, from car accidents to, you know, fires to, you know, vi violence, and it, it takes a toll on you. You know, we're human, and over the years, just repeated going to scenes like this over and over and over, it, it takes a physical and mental and emotional toll on a person. And we're losing people, first responders, to burnout. Um, you know, they're turning to alcohol, to drugs, divorce rate is high and unfortunately studies have shown that suicide rate is high for first responders as well and we have some of the best first responders in Bay County and we don't want to lose anybody so we formed a critical incident stress management team about a year and a half ago and it's made up of currently is made up of firefighters dispatchers paramedics and EMTs and soon we'll have law enforcement on board as well. And it's just peer support. Um, it's people, and we deal with first responders. So if somebody went to a bad call and they're having a hard time dealing with that, they can call us in. Everything is confidential. Um, nothing gets back to anybody. And, and it's somebody that has been in the same situation as them. So, you know, a firefighter is talking to a firefighter. A law enforcement officer is talking to a law enforcement officer. So it's somebody that knows the job that, that they're going, you know, that they're in, it's been in the same situation as they're in, and can relate. So that's the first step is trying to get them some help, is, you know, the peer support. Um, if, if the peer cannot help them, or they request further assistance, then we've got mental health counselors that we could reach out to as well. But, but this team is the initial, initial step because we, we want to try to prevent losing anybody. 
So, Captain, how can you encourage people to take advantage of this help? Because there's probably stigma, people don't want to ask for help or call. You know, what words of encouragement can you offer to someone who may be listening or watching and, and is dealing with a tough situation? Just let them know that, one, it's free. There, there's, there's absolutely no charge. Every agency in Bay County is on board with this team. We, we've talked to every single agency and every agency is on board. So for an employee to know that their boss has already signed off on this program, there's absolutely no cost. It's available 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. That they should know that they're not alone. The, the, the questions that they have, the emotions that they're feeling, the doubt, the anger, the frustration, the, if they're having bad dreams or loss of appetite, you know, stuff like that, they're not alone. They're not, they're not alone. Other people have gone through that and for them to just reach out and, and seek help. Um, that's not a sign of weakness, that's a sign of strength reaching out and asking your fellow brother or your fellow sister to help you, that's strength. Um, we, we preach brotherhood and sisterhood, and a lot of people that are, are not in the industry, they don't understand that. But because we work a third of our life here at the fire station, or we work, you know, shift work at EMS or law enforcement, you know, we trust our lives with our partner. So we develop that family relationship. And we, we preach this and talk about this all the time. And we have that true brotherhood, sisterhood. So just for these employees to, to remember that, hey, we preach this, we talk about this all the time, now act on it. Your brother is there, your sister is there, let us help you. You're not alone. Let us get you the help you need let's not lose you as a first responder. And I guess to know that things will get better and they, they can get past this? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, like I said, we're the first step. We'll make the initial contact. We'll talk to them and, and if they request further assistance, most agencies in our county have an EAP program or we have counselors set up through life management. So we can reach out and get a certified mental health counselor involved if, if the employee requests it or if it progresses that far. But absolutely, we'll get them through it. And um, real quick, want to touch on, of course, we're talking about the um, potential burnout and stress of the first responder, but I imagine that goes to their families as well. Oh, absolutely, yes. If, if the first responder is going through it, it affects the family as well. And, and our program is set up, we deal with the first responder, and it's set up for job-related stress and personal stress as well. So if, if they're having personal issues at the house or, or whatever personal issues, that does affect the job as well. So we deal with both sides of, of that. But yes, if, if the first responders are having problems, it does affect the family life as well. So we tie family in and we do give tips and we have check sheets and advice for family that if they're having a hard time because the, their, their loved one is having a hard time, we have some advice and some stuff that they can go through as well, which helps them cope while the first responder is coping. And we'll, we'll get them some counseling too. And you are listening and watching Rampline here on GCTV and GC 90.7 FM. And we are out here at uh, the fire station number one on Panama City Beach. Captain Terry Paris with us. Um, we can't let you go without getting you to inform us about some top safety tips, fire safety tips. Well, you know, last time we talked, we talked about why is this one of the best jobs that we have. <laughs> And, and talking about fire prevention and safety tips, one of the best things we get to do is go to the schools, go to the, um, the, the daycares and, and talk to the kids. And fire prevention is one of the best things. So um, educating the children, 
and 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 the adults, um, you know that 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 makes it worth it because we, we start the safety program early, and uh, we, we try to make our job easier by preventing fires. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, definitely it's fire prevention month, and uh, so we definitely want you to check your smoke detectors once a month, change the batteries twice a year. Um, the, the new thing now is, can you hear the beep where you sleep? So there should be a working smoke detector in every room, especially the bedrooms. Um, you know, have, a, have the escape plan, fire escape plan. Um, have a meeting place outside. Practice with your kids, you know, and, and, and teach them. Once they, they get outside, don't go back inside. Stay at that meeting place, and when the fire department gets there, let us know, hey, my pet's still inside, or my brother or sister, or my mom or dad, or somebody's still inside. Teach them, do not go back inside the house. Um, everybody stays in one spot. Um, practice the kids dialing 911, make them learn their address early, their name, phone number, stuff like that. Um, just general fire safety tips. So we need to hear the beep where we sleep. Hear the beep where you sleep. All right, I like that. And um, any final thoughts as we're wrapping up this edition of RAF Line? Just, you know, we invite the public out. They can come by either fire station anytime, Monday, well, seven days a week. Um, come out during normal business hours for a station tour. Come talk to us. We'll be happy to ask or answer any questions they ask. We'll give you a station tour. We'll let you know what it's really like to be a firefighter, show you around. Um, we definitely have the best job in the world. Well, with some of the best people in the world. Well, thanks for taking time out of your day to talk to us. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And that is a wrap for this edition of Wrap Line. And again, thanks to Captain Terry Paris with Panama City Beach Fire Rescue for inviting us out. And a reminder, if you are thinking of adding a pet to your family, consider the adoption option. You know, you can check out one of the many local animal rescue groups in our area or check out our Pet of the Week from the Bay County Animal Shelter on our Facebook page. For everyone here at GC 90.7 and GCTV, I'm Emily Blaze. Thanks for listening and watching and have a great day.